very, very wet indeed at the Algarve International track for the second European Le Mans Series event of the weekend, round six of the season. Umbrellas being turned inside out and so much standing water. According to Rui Andrade of Inter Europol competition, there were rivers at turn one, there were rivers at turn three and turn four and turn eight and turn 15. And it just wasn't going to happen to get the race underway. So we had to sit under red flag for 45 minutes after the attempted start at 2.30. This was 20 past three though, and finally we did see the green flag running. Crucially, that meant that 80% of the race could potentially be completed and therefore maximum points be awarded as Phil Hansen wasted absolutely no time at all, breaking later than Paul Lafargue into turn three to take the race lead. Also good dicing in the early stages between Duquesne team's Rene Binder and Manuel Maldonado. An overtake there for Kiffin Simpson on Maldonado as well for Algarve Pro Racing. This a big spin and uh, Nelson Piquet Jr. left the road by a considerable margin. Thankfully the gravel trap did just about a good enough job in slowing the Brazilian before he made contact with the tyre wall. But uh, surprising that actually the car didn't think about rolling over there as it dug in. Meantime, as we got back up and running again after the recovery necessary for the United car, this uh, uh, was a, an avoidable incident, perhaps. It was actually judged a racing incident as Nat Berton got squeezed between the GMB Motorsport, Aston Martin, Augusta Berg, and the 37 car of Malta Jakobsen. Thankfully, the Frenchman in the middle was able to get up and running again for DKR Engineering. Oli Jarvis, a real star for United Autosports. We'd had stints from Phil Hansen and his teammate Marino Sato. Jarvis put in for the closing double each of 40 minutes. And there was a tyre change halfway through as well. But regardless of whether it was drying conditions or bone dry, Jarvis really turning on the style despite the best efforts of the chasing 28 car of Paul Luc Chatin. Neil Jarney and the 65 would go side by side as well of Jot von Outert. And a bit of leaning on one another, but then it got worse. Neil Jarney spinning the Jot von Outert Panis racing car off the road. Jarney would be penalised for that. He would lose places for Jot von Outert. Actually, no, he would stay in third position and then come fighting back. The final ever race in Europe for the GTE category that first became part of the European Le Mans series in 2011 provided terrific action. A big off for Valdemar Eriksson at Turn 1 and then as Michael Fassbender rejoined, he spun the car after jumping over the kerb and that would pose huge problems for the number 12 WTM by Rinaldi racing car of Oscar Tugno. Unfortunately, Tugno's car would be left stranded out on track Jot van Aute and the 65 car dive bombing Alex Lynn into turn five but wasn't able to get through and the 65 car spun as a result. It's a third win of the season for United Autosports though and Oli Jarvis zigzagging across the road in celebration past the stricken Oscar Tugno car. And conversations now have uh, continued behind the podium for the major debrief after quite an afternoon of action in the European Le Mans series. It's a win for United Order Sports USA. They back up their maximum points haul from Friday of this week and the victory at Motorland Aragon after 97 laps. They win by just under six seconds over Algarve Pro Racing, this year's champions in LMP2. Panis Racing third in the 65. Also champions in LMP2 Pro-Am and winners today, AF Corsa in the 83 car ahead of Cool Racing. The gap was 0.6 of a second in the end and that was for the championship, remember, as well as the race victory. A Disappointed, I'm sure, Malta Jakobsen, but at least he'll feature on the podium. LMP3 honours go the way of Euro International today. We had a champion in that category on Friday, but Adam Alley and Matthew Richard Bell victorious in car 11. And the win in LMGTE in the final European race for that category goes also to the champions of Proton Competition, Ryan Hardwick, Zach Robichon and Alessio Picariello winning from AF Corsa's 51 car with a brilliant drive in the closing stages from Ulysses de Pau, Rui Aguash, Crichton Lentudis will be on the podium in a moment or two. Julian Anlauer, third for the 77 Proton Competition that he shares with Christian Reed and Gianmarco Liverato. Three cars did not make the finish, all from LMP3. The number five, RLR, after that big crash for Valdemar Eriksson. Ultimate 35, 
and the Nielsen Racing Car number seven.